Good day. So today we're going to take a look at changing the uh, injector seals on a CRD Jeep uh, Grand Cherokee. So back in the fall, I had a slight chugging kind of sound coming out of this. And as you can see now, the one injector seal has completely failed and it's uh, the diesel is turning into a tar type uh, substance. So basically what we need to do is to take off these hoses or these uh, tubes from the common rail. And uh, so there's like a 19 and an 18 millimeter, as far as I understand. And then we have to take off the fuel return line. So this one spins nice. You have to be very delicate and pull up on it. Check that out. The one that's been leaking, you can't see it very easily. But it doesn't want to spin. But I got to get that to work if this job is going to go ahead. Because uh, if you break that, there's nothing you can do. So it's uh, it's a pretty delicate job. You got to be uh, taking your time when you do it. If you do it on the passenger side, you'll have to take off the uh, air intake as well. So take a look at some of the tools that we've got here. So I've gotten a bunch of different things just to kind of play around. So I got uh, crow foot sockets from SunX, and I've gotten these uh, type of not sure what to call these things, but they're from. Uh, England I ordered these from and they don't skip to 18 which is important the Sun X doesn't skip to 18 I got this other cheap version here US Pro 5558 and it skips the 18 and these are kind of soft they're good for getting into places but they're not very strong so we'll see how those go take a look at uh, the other one here some uh, no markings. I'll take a look at uh, where I got these from and put that in the description. Then you need uh, consumables, you need copper washers. These are for Mercedes type engines. Some people use Honda ones, apparently they're softer or thicker or something. I'm just going to use uh, the regular ones. You need new stretch bolts. So you turn these up to 60 inch pounds and you torque them 90 degrees. In the manual it says go another 90 past that, but I don't think many people do it. Because if you break that off in the head, that's a problem. It's fairly deep. It's got some thread locker on there. So I'm just going to do the first 90 degrees. You need a T40 socket for it. So there's a, a six-cylinder, so you need six of them. Then these uh, O-rings go into those little clips I was showing you. So you got that. You need a, a torque wrench, obviously. This tool is for removing the uh, copper washers. I don't know if it have. I just bought it. It was like 10 bucks when I bought it. They're up more in price now, so I'm like, why not? Another tool that I might never use. And then a reamer set. So it's my understanding to use a 17 by 17 reamer to do the face of the head. I don't know if that's this guy. That's 17 by 21. Pretty sharp. Not 15 by 19. Anyway. Somewhere in there, you're going to find the uh, 17 by 17. We'll use that. So this has been leaking a long time. So I anticipate I'll have to face the surface of the head and possibly use even the injector. So uh, I guess that's about it. I'll just uh, I'll get the vehicle going so you can see it chugging along here. Now I've been told you need to do this warm because this uh, crusty stuff is pretty hard when it's uh, cold but it's kind of gooey when it's hot. So if you want to get this thing apart, it's going to need to be done when it's hot. And uh, I could have took it to the car wash, but I figured, yeah, maybe do it later. I've also, I noticed my oil consumption has gone up. I don't know if it's uh, because that cylinder is basically not firing. It's just blowing fuel out the exhaust and out the head because it doesn't have enough compression to hit every time. And it could be watering down my uh, engine oil conceivably. And it's probably not very good for the particulate filter. So uh, I bought an Autel 906BT. It's uh, in that black case there. I'll do a video about that later. But I can do a diesel particulate filter burn with that fairly easily. I bought a bunch of stuff from a garage actually. There's a, a taxi. He has like 80 cars and 200 drivers. But with the pandemic going on, the taxi isn't, industry is down. So I bought like a bunch of different stuff. I gotta fix this cart from him. So uh I'm kinda of packed in here as you can see. There's 
not as much space as a guy would like. But anyway, so we'll try to do this side, and then for bonus, I might do that side. But I gotta fix that one that's leaking because it's getting pretty gross. You don't enjoy driving in the, the vehicle anymore. So let's uh, get that thing started. to be fixed so let's uh, get started on doing that all right so I got the uh, first return hose off basically what you need to do is that there's this wider ring you have to pull up on that to disengage it so uh, you have to try and put a wrench around it and gently lift up on it and then it separates from the uh, fuel injector. You don't want to break these off because the fuel injectors are very expensive. And that comes into again why you need to use a special wrench on here so you don't break that off when you're undoing the injectors. So I gotta try and do a couple more. It's kind of fiddly work. I'm not going to film it. But the important point is that you have to spin these until they're loose to turn and pull them up. I was able to get the other one spinning so it turns and I'm going to have to lift it up. And once I get these off it looks like I'm going to need like a, an E10 or something as well in the back there to take that electrical wire cabling off of the uh, final injector area so I can get that tube off. So we'll, we'll be doing that as well. Alright, I got the bad one off so we'll give it a try on the third one. I got some water pump pliers that seem to be working okay. Obviously these can completely crush the fitting so you don't want to be hard on it. But Reach in there. Just gonna have to get this out of the way. Hopefully you can still see. Fortunately, it's more important for me to get this thing off without breaking it than it is to film it. got this fuel return line out of the way. I'll have to dig the o-rings out of it and uh, no destruction which is great. And this is uh, the transfer case or the transmission breather. One of the two comes up here sort of in the way. But we can work with that. So I guess the next thing we're going to start doing is uh, cracking these lines. The second line from the front comes from the uh, injection pump, so you don't really need to worry about it. Just leave it alone. It's important to keep the stuff as clean as you can. You don't want anything in your injection system because it's not going to work very well. I'll take a look at the injector after we get it out. See if I can get a line wrench on here. Maybe it will require taking them all out just to get access to them. Alright, so that's a, a half inch drive. Just not ideal. It's not a lot of space to work here. So I'll do that was super easy with the uh, 18 millimeter. Now if you'd use the uh, Sunax tool, the crow foot, it would just be sliding off and on. Oh, it might actually fit in there. I might use uh, this on this one. Wouldn't need to take that one off. And we'll see how, how it goes. We won't really know what we're doing until we're done. 
So uh, I'm going to just take these line sets off and then we'll get on to the next step. And just try not to get them mixed up, obviously, you're not looking for any extra work. I'll look like the ones the cylinder go, they're all the same. They sure look similar, but we'll put them back in the same spot anyway. All right, one thing I wanted to stress here is that when you're removing the uh, line off the fuel injector, it's very important not to break off this plastic fitting here. And uh, actually, it looks like the O-ring is on it. So that makes uh, that's easier than digging it out of the uh, other connector. So if you're going to try to use a regular uh, wrench, it's going to spin and be hard to hold on to. Whereas you can see just how simple it is for me to do it that way. So that's uh, another reason to use a, a line wrench so you don't break these off. Because uh, it's all pretty fragile, right? I haven't got that off. So it seems that it's uh, 17 on one end and 18 on the other. So I'm just gonna carry on taking these uh, tubes off. All right, getting to the back one was a bit tricky. You're going to want to have a quarter inch E10 socket. That's not gonna come into focus. But uh, if you try to use uh, an E10 socket off of, uh, out of like an impact gun kit, they're gonna be way too big. They'll be like 3 8 or half inch drive. And you're never gonna be able to get onto the bolts on this vehicle. So you definitely need to invest in that. It won't be in any kits. You have to buy it on its own. It's kind of challenging to get to this last one, but you don't need to turn it too far. You just need to crack them a few degrees and then they, they're pretty much finger tight after that. So I just get that one off of there and we will move on to the next step. Alright, so the next step is going to be to disconnect the electrical on the injector and then pull it out. So the first thing you do is you lift up this tab here. I've got my screwdriver I got when I was like six years old. First tool I ever got that was my own. And then push it in as hard as you can and you'll be able to lift this thing out. It's a bit of a bear. Yeah, so you push on the black tab after you lift the gray tab. There's not much space. So you got that out of there. Reach in here with the T40. This bolt. Oh, she's tight. Stretch bolt. Oh, it's tight all the way out. That's not good. So these holes need to be uh, blown out and cleaned before you put anything else in them. Probably have to run a tap through it as it is tight. You're going to be on your torque without even putting uh, the bolt in barely. It's in a long way too. That is weird. Pardon my reach. There's a lot of ways that this job can go bad, so just take your time. And if it goes bad, you end up taking the cylinder head off of the engine. So got that out. Let's see what the next thing is. I think I'm going to put uh, a puller on this injector just to give me something to grab onto. So we'll get that set up and then we'll get back to this. Alright, got a puller set up. 
just on lightly actually and by just by putting it on here I can now move the injector I don't need to use the slide but I may as well this retainer is getting caught on a tube Injector over the head. Oh, glad I found on the floor. All right, so I'll, I'll get this set up on the table. Take a look at it. All right, so the first thing I noticed when I was pulling this injector out was uh, it's got some grease on it. This is like a Febby ceramic grease. I used this on my uh, glow plugs, so I'm gonna have to find out where I put that and uh, put it on here. If not, if you're in a pinch, you might be able to use the uh, orange brake caliper grease. I have some over there. Might use that if I'm really desperate. But uh, obviously this seals on the head. Bear with me trying to get a, a shot of it. So this is in excellent condition. I won't need to do much for that. It's greased in. A little bit stuck, but nothing seriously. So there's that pipe that we're very concerned about not damaging. This is the uh, the bolt came out. So you have to make sure that this bolt hole is clear right to the bottom. Otherwise it'll bottom out the new one and snap it off. you will be in a world of hurt because it's going to be like that far into the head. And that's just a little fork that holds the... Uh, injector in. Now for the uh, parts that I used to pull this out, I did a video on this injector kit. I didn't need to use it on this, but it was kind of handy to be able to put something on it to grab onto it just to, because you're trying to like pull on a little bolt that's like that far into the head. It's not that easy. So I took out uh, the long slide here, the adapter here, and number 27 whatever that is so I'll tell you what the uh, threads are if you go to that video number 27 now in the head side of things let me find a flashlight there's one in my pocket Now I'm trying to see, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, so that copper washer is hiding down there. I don't want to forget that guy. Gotta get that out. I'm not be able to focus on it though. So I guess we'll pop that one out. Yeah, maybe not. Let's look into that hole, the threaded hole. It's kind of gooey in there. You probably can't see it, but you need to take a good look at it when you're working on it. So I guess I better do one at a time, that way I don't drop any junk in the engine. And uh, one thing with the CRDs, they have very high pressure in the uh, rails. So you don't crack these open when you're bleeding them. Because if you get too close to it when it's firing, the diesel will go into your skin and into your uh, bloodstream. And it can kill you. So don't, uh, don't try to bleed just like a conventional diesel. just wanted to say that now and I'll say it again later in the video. All right, let's see if we can fish that washer out of there. So basically you take this tool, make sure it's all tight. You don't want to lose any pieces into the cylinder head because there's a lot of pieces on the end of this thing. You don't want that into your cylinder. Then you tighten this big knurled piece here. If you had to, you could put a puller on there, but I don't, let's hope we don't need to do that. Let's drop that down in. I'm in all the way. Didn't get it. Still didn't get it. 
curious to see what's going on. Try looking with my flashlight here. Well, I got it loose. All right, it's just sitting in the bore. So now I gotta fish it out with uh, something without actually being able to see it. All right, I'll have to get out of there with a the hook. But uh, the good thing is that this was able to break it loose. And now I just gotta fish it out of there and check the condition of things. All right, so after a bit of fishing, I was able to get the uh, washer out. I just took a piece of uh, galvanized wire from electric fence to get it out of there. Just, again, just try not to lose it in there. You can see how it's uh, squished. This one wasn't leaking, so it wasn't in too bad a shape. Definitely a pain in the butt to get out of there. All right, just been trying to clean the uh, bore for the uh, fuel injector. I forgot that I bought in a uh, a kit for cleaning 12 gauge shotguns to do this. So you can just put that in there and get that nice and clean very easily. So I uh, recommend you do get a, a 12 gauge uh, shotgun. Just you need the puffy part and then uh, something to get in there. You don't need to get the, the full deal. I think I've got some, uh, what do we call it, elaborate. But fairly complete kit. It does uh, some rifle barrels as well. But it's the uh, same size as the 12 gauge. And uh, the reamer part, all you do is uh, put that in, just put it by hand and just twist it like this. You never back up with the reamer, you always go forward. It's the flat 17 by 17. I just did it by hand just to break off any of the gunk. And it's nice and clean in there now. So take a look at that and then we'll start putting it back together. Alright, so things are looking pretty good in there. It's not going to focus of course. Oh, maybe. Look at that. So, ready to drop a uh, washer back in there. I still need to inspect this uh, tapped hole here. Make sure it's clean. There's a ball that the uh, retainer sits on. And like I said, you might need to run a tap through there and make sure it's good and clean. All right, so this is what I used to clean out the uh, head there for that bolt. Just a vacuum with a piece of fuel hose. All right, got the uh, first injector on. Vacuuming out that thread worked out really good. It went in just by hand. It wasn't any binding. Put it into 60 inch pounds. Don't try to use a foot pound wrench. You're going to... You have to divide by, or multiply, or sorry, divide by 12. So you're going to go 5 foot-pounds, it's not going to work. You're just going to break the bolt. So trying to get the uh, injector puller onto this second one from the back or front is not easy. I'm only on by a couple threads. Yeah. It's going to be hard to get this one out. And taking off that cross brace is a bit of effort. I think you have to take out the uh, battery box to do that. So uh, I'll keep trying. I might grind down part of the shaft just to get around here. Got to find a way to get some clearance because uh, I don't want to do too much work. This is kind of it's a bit time consuming because you got to do it right. And uh, it's getting kind of late in the day. I want to get this done. But the good news is that it's easy. It's just time consuming. You got to be patient. So we're running out of patience. That's uh, the only problem here. All right, when you're trying to remove the injector, you might be tempted to put a screwdriver between the uh, bracket and the uh, valve cover. You can't really put very much pressure on that because you'll end up just putting a hole in your valve cover and having to take that off. So don't do that. I just put this uh, adapter on, hit the injector with a hammer a couple times, like I'm way off for getting this thing on there easily, unfortunately. If I have to, I'll take the vehicle apart, but I would rather not, so I'm going to keep fiddling away here. And uh, hopefully I can get that injector out. I should have done that one when it was smoking hot. It was a mistake to do that one second. Alright, I found a solution to reach around that bracket. 
So let's see if we can get this thing out of here. Just using the claw. Oh, it's coming. Now I'm bound up. All right, so having a multitude of different polar styles definitely helps because that was uh, in there pretty gross. So we'll get that out and take a look at it. That's the injector there, so it's pretty gross. It's got this stuff all over it. They call it Black Death, but it's... You kind of put your fingernail into it. I'll have to clean that off. I was able to clean the other one off with just a bit of uh, brake cleaner. This one's a bit far gone. We'll see. If you can see where it was leaking here. Maybe not. When you look into the hole, it's kind of obvious where it's been leaking. We're not going to get a straight shot, obvious, I guess. You can almost see the washer, but what I'm trying to show is that the washer is black for like one quadrant. Where it hasn't been sealing. Oh. That looks like we can get this out of there. I'm not going to worry too much about cleaning this off. Just want this vehicle to work. That's the main thing. All right, so I used the gun cleaner as best I could here to try and clean this out. I can't get the uh, corners and the bore clean. So I'm going to try to use the reamer now just to ream it by hand, a touch. See how that goes. So like I said, I can't get it clean. I'm just using brake cleaner and the uh, reamer. So where is that thing? I'm getting distracted. There's a giant squirrel that lives in there. So I'm trying to find the uh, reamer tool here. It's probably right in my face, but... I don't see it, so I guess I'll turn off the camera and find it. Let's see if we can get that squirrel to come out of here. There he is. Alright, back to the plan. Me and my buddy. I'm just going to put this in here and uh, turn it by hand. I don't want to remove a lot of material. It's sort of self-centering at the bottom, has a pilot on it. I feel that I'm getting into the aluminum. That should be good. Let's see if we got anything. Yeah, I got some gunk. I think that was the goal. Let's take a look down there again. You can probably see it better than me. I know we're trying to look around the corner. But, uh, carry on with the cleaning. This thing is uh, just about done in the cylinder now. Alright, removing the carbon is going pretty good. It's actually pretty brittle. So it's going to be picking away at it and chipping it off. Getting pretty good. Again, this is the only part that truly matters. It needs to be uh, a good surface against that washer. This stuff would be better if I was putting grease on it, but I don't have. I can't find my uh, Febby grease. Just to keep water from going down into the hole. That's really all that that is for. Keep uh, it from getting stuck in there for the next guy. But I am the next guy, so I just have to live with that. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna keep chipping this stuff off, reaming it out a little bit, and then cleaning it some more. Helped out. So I'm getting pretty close to putting this injector back in. All right, so I wasn't happy how the bolt hole cleaning was going, so I took out my uh, air compressor and blew that out. You can use one of these for blowing the copper washers out of the uh, head as well. I've seen a video on a guy doing that, but you must matter if you're on the compression stroke or not for that to work. Because you got to pump up the cylinder and then pull it off, and then the, all the air rushing out of the cylinder blows out the copper washer. I'll say that this uh, 
tool here is pretty much a piece of junk. I haven't had any success with that, so I wouldn't worry about buying it. I just use a, a wire. That's good enough. So uh, I think I'm getting pretty close to getting this uh, injector back in, so I'll get set up to do that. Alright, I'm not sure what the correct way of putting this washer in is. Like it's obviously it's been stamped from one side, so it's got a bit of a profile. But I'm just gonna put like the round side up towards the uh, injector. I'm gonna drop this in and then I'll put this uh, bolt in. I kind of need to drop in the uh, retainer with the injector. So I'll do these two together. Got everything clean. And if the washer falls off out of the way, you'll know, because obviously the injector's not going to go in all the way. Then you'll have to regroup and try again. It feels like it's going to stay where it needs to be. Yeah, I know. No problem. My squirrel's back, you can hear him in the background. So this uh, new fastener is going in pretty easily. So I got the retainer on the uh, ball socket, it's ready to go. So we got this guy set to 60 inch pounds. Now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees. Oh, that's stiff. Alright, so that was 90 degrees. If for some reason it was still leak, I would just crank on a little bit more until it stops leaking. I wouldn't try to get another 90 degrees out of it because that one really you could feel the tension going onto it. So I'll get the uh, last one done, then I'll have to put the new O-rings on and put it back together. Alright, just for a recap now we're getting ready to put things back together. So for the last uh, injector, for the electrical connector, I had to pop this part up. And then I had to reach in and disconnect it from here, uh, from the base, for whatever reason. The uh, pushing on the tab didn't want to work. And I also found that using the pick was helpful just in generally cleaning the gunk off of here. When I wanted to put the last uh, injector in, it had some stuff around it from the other injector. I was able to pick around and get that stuff out of there. Now, if you thought you had a problem with your injectors and they were uh, leaking internally, this you would put a bunch of uh, plastic hoses on them into like pop bottles and you could run it now and see because the return lines shouldn't have very much uh, fluid return in them so you would just uh, run them all down together for a leak test on each side of the engine and you'd be able to tell if uh, you had a, a leaking injector or a group of them and at some point you'd be able to figure out whether it was time to replace them or not I don't have a lot of details on that right now. So I'm just going to put the uh, O-rings back on right now. Which are kind of hard to get out of the bag. Packaged individually. There's a bit much. Just put them on make sure that they're not twisted up somehow. I'll put parts uh, in the description of the video after the fact. I don't know all the part numbers anymore. I bought these uh, parts when I bought the Jeep three years ago because I knew that I'd have to do this eventually. I just didn't know when. So it's a very common problem for these injectors to leak and it's kind of like a recurring maintenance. So I'm going to wait till the other side starts to leak on one cylinder and then I will do it as a group next. So I've done the one bank here now. The next o-ring here. So as a recap, I found that the uh, line 
wrenches work good, like the line sockets. Oh boy. I'm going ahead of myself here, I might have lost that o ring. Great, something else to look for. Well, I'm never going to find that again. Unless it's right in front of me, which is not. All right, I just have to order more O-rings. That's unfortunate. I guess I could reuse one of them. How about we do that? If it leaks, I'll know why. It'll be a little experiment. Alright, so it's all on there. Grab this return line. I've already got all the uh, steel lines on nice and firm. So I think I just gotta push this on. Yeah, and then we'll have to push down these uh, black rings as we get them all in position. That's on nice. That's on, and then push these rings down. Yeah, it's not that bad. Put it in that one. Why is that? Yeah, so if one of them doesn't feel like all the others, then obviously something funny is going on. To try it again. Yeah, I didn't have that one in all the way, so it wouldn't re connect correctly. This is a fiddly little job. Oh, it doesn't want to work. That one didn't want to go on because I had it pushed down all the way before I even started. Yeah, you can hear it snap onto that o-ring. Then you can snap down the other part. All right, before we start the engine, I'm gonna stop, collect our thoughts here, think about everything we've done, try to decide if we've got it all complete or not. I've got all the tools out of the engine bay. We'll do a recap on the tools here after this is done. So I've got the electrical plugged in. I had one off because I was playing around with it, trying to figure out why this one wouldn't come off. So that's good. Let's zoom out a little bit. These are all tight. I don't think you need to bottom these out super hard with the fittings that they have. That'd be something to check before you take it apart to see how tight they are to begin with. Uh, uh, I think we're good. I'm going to open the garage door. And give it a go.
All right, I think we got it. Thank goodness for that. So I should have turned the key on for 30 seconds and then off before I started cranking it. That's the reason why I cranked for so long. That was uh, just I could have bled the system. But like I said, you don't touch any of these injector lines when the engine is running. There's very high pressure in these. They can puncture your skin and the diesel in your uh, bloodstream can and will kill you. I found one tool in the engine bay. All right. So let's, uh, I guess we'll look at the tools here before we uh, wrap things up. So this, uh, it took me a few hours. Let's see what time it is now. I started at two. Gosh, it's already almost uh, quarter to eight. It was a long day. So part of that was, uh, I've never done this before. It takes a bit more time when you're filming it, which isn't a bad thing because it gives you time to think about it as well. Uh, so I went through most of the tools that I bought. So let's take a, a look here. So I wouldn't have made money on that if I was charging a customer. But I would the next time. So uh, basically, I did like, yeah, I did use a, a two pound hammer. This thing was junk, don't buy that. That's the uh, injector washer remover. These are fantastic. You're going to need this in a 18 millimeter. And a 17 millimeter. For whatever reason, the uh, tubes are different on each end. There's that. You're going to need a T20 with a quarter inch uh, wrench, torque wrench set to 60 inch pounds. Now, I have ignored that leaking injector for months. And I burned, I don't know if I burned five tanks of fuel through the thing, and it got to be that big of a mess. So I needed to use the uh, injector puller. So I've got that. It's, uh, it's a big set. It's got to weigh 80 pounds or 50 pounds. I don't know, it's heavy, whatever it is. It depends, I think the packaging it might be 80 pounds. But uh, I'd recommend that if you've got a bunch of stuck injectors in there. If you're just doing this uh, ahead of time or if you caught it early, I wouldn't worry about that. You're going to need stretch bolts. You're going to need the uh, copper washers. You're going to need the O-rings. The reamer is handy for cleaning. This was the 17 by 17 flat. It helps uh, get the junk out of the corners so you can get the washers in there. The pick, very helpful. I've got the connector out, plus it breaks the carbon up. Some flat screwdrivers. Just random stuff. Stuff that you should have. They didn't use any power tools, but it's still kind of an expensive job because of uh, the injector related tools. But at least uh, you know that it, it's done right if you do it carefully. You're using the file a little bit, but you don't really need that. You want an air compressor with a, a wand on it to blow out the uh, threaded holes. These gear wrench uh, gadgets here didn't use. There's the front injector on the driver's side. I just used an adjustable wrench on. There wasn't much space to get the... Uh, special tool in there but for the other ones it's like mandatory to have it because it's just not enough space plus you don't want to damage the injectors so I think that is about it I'm gonna to have to come back and clean this up tomorrow and go to get home so I think uh, that's about it this vehicle has exactly like 300,000 kilometers on it now so I'm not sure what that is in miles I guess you can do the math if you divide by 1.6. And it's been leaking for a little bit. But some people, they get them leaking way earlier than others. I'm not really sure what the reason is behind that. But anyway, we got that done. Hopefully it's uh, been helpful for you. Hopefully it saves you some time. There's a bunch of ways you can break your engine by doing this job if you're not careful. If you take it to a garage, they might break it too. Because if they haven't gone through this on a Mercedes-type engine, they might be in over their heads. 
if they're in a hurry and they're trying to do this <clears throat> as piecework and they're not getting paid by the hour. I've seen these things go home on the tow truck. They don't get fixed. They get broken. So uh, thank you for watching.